I'm joined by my good colleague, Shadia Edwards Dashti, who uh, works at RT UK, but is increasingly a uh, power in the broadcasting world uh, across the globe. Uh, Shadia, thank you for joining us. I asked Rachel if Emma Raducanu had made it big in the US media, and it turns out actually rather not, uh, because they had uh, uh, so many other things competing for space in the media, 9-11 and, and all. Uh, it has been an extraordinary explosion of interest in this 18-year-old girl uh, here in Britain, hasn't it? Have you followed that? Absolutely. As a woman in sport myself, it's so amazing to see her do so well of course uh, just a few weeks ago she stumbled a little bit but she came back so fighting so strong and it's just amazing to see a woman do so well but not just a woman but a young woman at that taking on uh, the media by storm but taking on not just the nation here in the UK but globally it it really was I think a lot of people in the UK were just hoping and praying she would do it because it really represents and symbolizes something much bigger than I'm sure she could probably appreciate right now, but it's just incredible to see. The mental strength was astounding. As you say, she disappointed at Wimbledon. She had to qualify for the US Open uh, and she didn't drop one set. How's that for remorseless focus? I think, you know, in some ways, maybe her age actually played for her, with her, rather than against her in this sort of space, because maybe she didn't feel uh, all the years of maybe some other professionals in the same sector that have so much pressure on them to live up to reputations and so on. And sometimes it's better just to be like, whatever, I'll give it my best shot. And if it's not good enough, then fine. And if it is, well, as it is, and it has been, it really, really paid off for her. But yeah, there was a lot of pressure on her. But in some ways, because she was a bit younger than majority of whom have done so well, it might have just made her think. She had nothing to, to uh, and focus. nothing to lose. Yeah, you're a football. Exactly. You're a footballer, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I, I would like to put myself out there as a footballer. I play in Sunday League, so it's not very uh, high up there. But of course, we keep it as competitive as if it was the World Cup every single Sunday. Yeah, of course. I, I play my small children as if it's the World Cup. It's very exactly. cruel. It's very cruel. I bowl them out of the way uh, <laughs> in order to battle down on... Uh, uh, George, you cannot as a get footballer, onto the pitch. Stay yeah, on the sideline. Exactly. As a footballer... You must have been impressed by Cristiano's return. Yeah, I mean, if he didn't go back to Manu, oh my goodness, there would have been absolute tears. But it's great again for Britain to see his return. I think so many football fans, it doesn't really matter what football team you support in the UK. Everyone's just like, the king is home. Exactly. Now, look, uh, the, the, big, the, the king is home, but the prince is hiding behind his mother's skirts. It's an unedifying spectacle, Shadia, isn't it? A, a man of 61 hiding behind his 94-year-old mother, trying to uh, avoid the bailiffs uh, um, tendering legal papers on him. Look, I think this really speaks about the monarchy in general, really, uh, and talks about privilege, the heart of what privilege really means in this society. Also, capitalism. At the end of the day, it really does feel like money is total power, uh, especially here in the United Kingdom. And it feels like you can do no wrong, uh, commit the worst kind of crimes and just hide behind that pillar of the state almost. Yeah, um, but the... You know, she's got poor Queen Elizabeth. She's got all these sons embarrassing her uh, to uh, one degree or another. But Prince Andrews is of a, in a way, a different order, isn't it? He, he's evading justice uh, in a serious uh, criminal case uh, of alleged sexual assault. Why is the British media not up in arms against him. They, they kick lumps out of Prince Harry uh, for far lesser uh, offences than uh, is alleged against Prince Andrew. 
Yeah, absolutely. We're seeing this time and time again. And with Prince Andrew, it's honestly, it's completely shocking that the media is allowing him to get away with it. It's almost like, let's just turn it to the back of our newspaper. Let's not really uh, dig into this and really hold uh, the powers that be accountable. That, as you say, Prince Harry is vilified uh, by the media and he is almost seen as a scapegoat for the rest of uh, the monarchy and the royal family. But really, when we look at the face of it, look at what Prince Andrew is doing. He, he should be in jail right now well he, uh, anybody else would be how. on uh, would there'd be on remand anyway uh, poor julian assange has uh, been on remand for for years uh, and he's not uh, facing uh, the allegation that prince andrew is uh, boris johnson there was some thought that there'd be a reshuffle in downing street tonight it doesn't appear to have materialized but Quite a few of the British ministers' jackets are hanging on a shaky nail, don't you think? Oh, totally. Not just on a shaky nail, but really on the floor right now. To be quite frank, a cabinet reshuffle should have happened a long, long time ago. But then again, when you talk about a cabinet reshuffle, you have to think, well, who on earth from the Tory party would replace the cabinet? Good we point. are looking at a really weak Tory government, not just in terms of who's in the cabinet, but also Tory backbenchers as well, because they're not really pointing the fingers of blame or at the Tory party in check at all. So we look at these uh, big in, in the Tory party. We look at Matt Hancock, look how he's fallen. Sajid Javid, a terrible replacement. Preeti Patel, absolutely awful. We have so many ministers. Dominic Raab, who's at the forefront of all of these uh, controversies as of late. This is beyond a tiny cabinet reshuffle that we might need to see. Uh, but actually, at the crux of it, I would say a total, total shake-up, not just a little tiny reshuffle, but a total shake-up of who is governing uh, the United Kingdom. And yet, if they were to fall tomorrow, the opposition front bench is as bereft uh, of uh, talent and ideas and any kind of plan for... Uh, taking Britain out of the crises, multiple crises that we are in. I've not known a time, and I've been around a long time, uh, when the two front benches between them could barely muster a statesman or a stateswoman uh, between them. Uh, how did it get to this, Shadia? How depressing is this, George, that neither the Tory party or the Labour party, the opposition, can't even oppose? This has got to a really, really tragic state. And I think, you know, the first glimmer of hope for the left was Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, and obviously in 2019, in the general election, it went so terribly wrong. People weren't getting behind him. I think that's where uh, this all this sad, sad story, this sad chapter really does begin. The huge loss in, in the 2019 general election for the left, really. Uh, and it has just got worse and worse since then. Yes, the Tory party are now working with a stronger majority than before, 80 seats, that's fine. That still doesn't mean the opposition can't oppose. But what we're seeing is Keir Starmer, he doesn't mutter a word on anything. Even the pandemic, which arguably wasn't a political uh, situation, but that doesn't mean you can't hold the government to account of how they're handling a health crisis. You can still put political points uh, against the government, and he simply couldn't do that. So if, a, if the opposition can't even oppose on a health grounds, how on earth is he supposed to oppose on a political grounds? And we're really getting to that sad, tragic state where the Tory party, they won all of these red wall seats. They turned from red to blue based on huge fundamental lies by the Tory party. But it was simply Keir Starmer's just not able to win anything back because he's just so weak. This is the anniversary uh, of uh, uh, Jeremy Corbyn becoming Labour leader. And of course, despite the tidal wave of attacks, uh, propaganda against him. He came within 3,000 votes of becoming prime minister in, uh, in 2017. And then 
crashed to defeat in 2019, uh, in part because he was forced to adopt uh, a policy on Brexit, uh, which was guaranteed to lose uh, all these red wall seats that you refer to. What is the future for Jeremy Corbyn if he isn't readmitted into the Labour Party? What's the point of him uh, continuing to be a member of it? Well, just to say, you know, on, on the Brexit, uh, uh, when you're referring to Brexit there, particularly in the general election, um, obviously it did, turn, the general election of 2019 definitely turned into another referendum of sorts. And we did see that in very uh, various ways with many seats turning to blue because they were more supportive of Brexit in certain areas up and down the United Kingdom. As for Jeremy Corbyn, I think he was really pushed and pulled, tugged in so many different directions uh, because majority of the Labour Party are centralists. They're not really left-wing activists at all. So I feel like he was being pulled in many different directions, which in some ways probably didn't go to his uh, credit or benefit in, in many ways. But in terms of where Jeremy Corbyn sits now, I personally think it's absolutely atrocious how Keir Starmer has treated him considering that Keir Starmer was supporting him uh, when he, they were trying to get uh, the general election, campaigning for the general election in 2019, completely backstabbed by Keir Starmer. But quite frankly, Big Corbyn is now free uh, from, the, from the shoulder blades of uh, Keir Starmer, who's pressing his hands down onto Jeremy Corbyn and many other politicians. He's now free from that burden and free from the wrath of uh, Keir Starmer that quite frankly he can now go about and campaign exactly how he used to without having to conform or abide by any rules and at the end of the day uh, we both know Tony Benn so well and he said he left Parliament to get more political. Yes exactly. Uh, thank you Shadia very much indeed for your debut on the mother of all talk shows. Most interesting. Thank you. Thank you, you so to see much. You. Thank you. And good luck in the football. I'll be Thank looking you. out for your uh, result. Thanks, Shadia.